Good evening. My name is Dr. Marlon McKay. I am a GP in Florida in the West Rand. I'm seeing many, many cases of uh, COVID-19 and every day we have to feel so many questions around the virus, around the illness. And I thought I'd just make a little clip and try and answer some of the most commonly asked questions around uh, COVID-19. So I have a list of questions that have been asked. So I'm just going to go through them and try and summarize the answer. And hopefully all of us can just learn a little bit more about this important pandemic, bearing in mind that uh, we are sitting on the verge of 150,000 cases of COVID-19 currently. Um, question number one, at the rate that it's spreading, it's inevitable that we will get it. What are your must-haves at home to beat this? I think it's not so much about what you have at home, it's about where you are and what you are not doing. And what I mean by this is that it's very, very important that we should be at home and only going out for the bare minimum. If you're going to work, go to work only and come back. We should not be socializing, we should not be doing anything else except making sure that we are safe and protected in our homes. And I'm sure one of the other questions will, will also cover that. But in terms of must-haves, I would suggest some vitamin D, uh, vitamin C, some zinc, some magnesium, and you can speak to your chemist for the little ones, um, some of these multivitamin syrups that have specifically zinc and, uh, and vitamin C would be good to, to have. Make sure, obviously, that you have enough hand sanitizer, that you have sufficient amount of masks and a good soap and surface sanitizers and disinfectants. Okay, another question, Dr. McKay, my partner tested positive for COVID-19 last week. The fever and sweating is up and down. How long does this last? He gets extremely cold, even though it's not cold. His entire body shivers, he's, he's on vitamin C, uh, vitamin D and zinc. Yeah, uh, good question. We, a lot of the symptoms start from usually from about day two, that's the incubation period, but can last and um, right up to 14 days, the duration of the infection, okay? The, the good news is that it will go get better, um, and every day should be a little bit uh, better than the day before. However, around about day seven, day eight, especially in the high-risk cases, be careful about the breathing, the shortness of breath. Um, that can easily deteriorate and the fever can spike. So it's a, it's a viral infection. There are no quick fixes. So please be patient, um, and hopefully that the infection will, will subside and get better. Again, we know that. Uh, in, even in my practice, um, over 90% of my patients do, do recover. Now, if I've been exposed to the virus, get tested, and the results show negative, do I still have to quarantine? This is such an important point. Remember, if you get a phone call that says, um, listen, you were with me and I have tested positive, um, take the necessary steps, and we get the call. The most important thing about uh, being in contact with someone who tested positive is quarantine. In other words, leave whatever you are doing, get home and be in quarantine. And you should know what quarantine means. For the next 14 days, you do not leave, you protect the others at home. Now, if you get sick, then you call your doctor and the doctor can arrange for you to have a COVID test. Do not, under any circumstances, leave to go to the doctor's place. Now remember, if the test comes back negative, it does not mean that you are safe to go out. All it means is that up until that point, you are still negative. You need to thus quarantine just in case you may turn positive later on during the, the time of your quarantine. So the most important thing about exposure is not testing, is really quarantine for 14 days. Please, please don't forget that. I'm having flu-like symptoms. Another question, my doctor suggests that I go and get tested. While waiting for the results, what do I do? Do I go about my normal everyday routine or do I stay at home? Good. If your doctor has advised you that you get tested, that means there is sufficient amount of, of, of uh, evidence or sufficient amount of, of um, something that points toward COVID-19, which means that you must treat yourself as if you are already positive, which means that you must be at home and in quarantine. If the test then comes back negative, then you may, once you're better, resume your activities. So the rule is, if you are sick and you need a test, get tested. If it's negative, you know that it's one of the other viral infections and you are safe to go outside afterwards. But the moment you go for a test, the rule is, please, please quarantine. There are too many stories of, oh, but I thought I'll be negative. Oh, I thought, but the test was taking so long, so I just went back to work or I went back to school. Please remain in quarantine until you get that result. Is it okay for me to visit my parents' family even if I work from home? No, it is not okay. 
the, the restrictions state very, very clearly, there are no um, socializing at home. And I can't state this um, more clearly, more robustly. I have patients who are in ICU, grandparents, older patients who have never left home, but are ill and severely ill, critically ill. Why? Because someone in the family was missing them and someone came to visit them. Please do not under any circumstances be visiting, especially if you are working, especially if you are up and down to the shop, to the chemist, you could well be carrying the virus without knowing it. We're talking about asymptomatic infections. So please make sure that you protect the elderly and protect those who are safely at home. What should I do if I get sick or someone in my house gets sick? Again, the rule is quarantine, um, just to be on the safe side, get tested, and then you can see from there. Please protect and prevent the further spread of, of COVID-19. What is the risk of my child becoming sick with COVID-19? A lot of discussion, especially very emotional topic with regard to the reopening of the schools. The science tells us that kids can get sick, but kids are not the spreaders. Kids do not get the, the infection, they're not as common in kids as in adults. The infection is a lot milder in children compared to adults. Kids don't land up in hospital. Kids don't, uh, don't die from COVID. They don't land up in ICU. And kids are not the primary spreaders of the disease. So it is safe for your kid to go to school and it is safe to, be, uh, to have them all over the ship. Okay? So please, please, let's make sure that our kids do get, school, get to school where the, the opportunity is, uh, is available. If they do get sick, it'll be either an asymptomatic infection or a very mild infection. Are the symptoms of COVID-19 different in adults and in uh, uh, children? Not much different. The symptoms are very much the same. Remember, this is a, a respiratory illness, so any of the headache, fever, cough, body aches and pains, except that in adults, it can be much more severe. Kids will have a mild infection and may even well have an asymptomatic infection. Can someone test negative and later test positive? Absolutely. It's all about timing. If you test too soon, it may be that the virus is not yet detectable and therefore the, the, the SARS-CoV test will be negative. And this is why it's so critical for everyone to rather be in quarantine. If you suspect the infection, don't rely on the test, rely on the safety of quarantining for, for 14 days. If I've tested positive, is it safe to be taking antibiotics or any other medication to help with the symptoms? There is no place for antibiotics in the management of COVID-19 as we speak right now. We do not have any definitive treatment. There's some good data to suggest that a commonly used steroid, dexamethasone, may be of value, but that is only in patients who are in hospital, on oxygen or ventilated patients. Antibiotics are not indicated. They do not work against uh, COVID-19. There are no antibiotics that are effective against viral infection. So please do not be stocking up on, uh, on antibiotics. Doctors will give you a specific script that contains a combination of vitamin D, um, zinc, magnesium, vitamin C um, to help specifically with the management of the symptoms of COVID-19. Of COVID if I have recovered from COVID-19, will I be immune to it? Good question. The point is we do not know. We think that there may be uh, some degree of immunity. It's probably temporary, may, may, maybe about three months. But the rule is if you have had COVID-19 and you recover, please make sure that you still take all the precautions because you may well become reinfected. And there are certain cases, anecdotal evidence that it does happen. Please do not let it happen to you. Do not take advantage of the fact that you have been infected prior. You may even get a, a, an infection that may be more severe than the first one. So don't regard immunity as, as, a, as a rule. What should people at high risk of serious illness with COVID-19 do? Please stay home. Again, the rule is stay home, keep your hands sanitized, protect yourself, right? Um, we are all uh, vulnerable to this disease, but those who have comorbid conditions, obesity, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, um, those who are on, on immunosuppressants such as cancer patients, they will be vulnerable to a much more serious uh, illness with more complications. So please protect yourself and make sure that you are rather home where it is where it is safe okay someone in my house gets tested positive what must happen next the rule quarantine so once that person has tested positive that person must go into what we call isolation isolation means totally on their own using their own bathroom uh, sanitizing the place do not share kitchens do not share bathrooms do not share the laundry nothing completely isolated on their own for the next 14 days the rest of the family must go into quarantine 
which means 14 days not leaving the home, only being able to go for a test, go to the doctor, but nothing else. Right? And nobody is allowed to visit because then you can spread the disease to them. And if they get sick, then you can go for a test. Okay, So sick people, positive with COVID-19, isolation. The rest of the family goes into quarantine. Why is it okay to go to the shops, but we cannot visit family and friends? Because you may well bring the illness home to your family and friends, and especially to your, your parents and your grandparents who are at high risk of more serious illness. A lot of cases that we are seeing is by community transmission, transmission and primary transmission within the home environment. So please keep your doors locked. Don't even let your family in, especially if they are working, going to school, going to work. Make sure that you protect yourself against any visitors. Please stay home and stay safe. What, if, what do I do if someone in the household tests positive and there's no room for them to isolate? Well, government has made facilities available for those um, to be uh, isolated um, elsewhere in a specific building. Some of the medical aides have also made arrangements with some of the hotels for you to be isolated if that is possible. Um, but if you look at the guidelines on the NICD website, there are still ways and means that you, you can, even within the confines of a small place. The main thing is isolate if you're sick, protect the rest of your family. If someone is sick, please quarantine if you've been exposed, protect the rest of the community against uh, being transmitted with, with COVID-19. So these are some of the questions. I trust that they've helped you to, um, to be just empowered and be enlightened a little more about COVID-19. Bearing in mind, I'm not an expert. There's very little that we, we do know about it. We are learning as we go along. Uh, but please, please remember Dr. McKay's three Ws, wash your hands, wear your mask, and watch your distance and protect yourself and please be safe and take care. Thank you for watching. Good night.